the sea. Your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the and I will bravely lift my hands, for I will always sing when your love came down. Because it is the Christmas season, we began speaking about Jesus. And particularly last week, we began talking about one of the most basic things that we believe, that Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus saves. Well, we saw last week what it means that Jesus particularly saves from sin. Jesus saves from Sin, this is the most basic of his saving work. It all begins right here. It begins with him saving us from sin. And it's the most emphasized point in the New Testament. And we saw that last week. And this week I want to continue preaching on Jesus as our Savior. Last week we saw where Jesus' saving activity began. This week I want to take you to where it ends. Or... How far does it extend? How he saved us from sin, but then how far does he save us? How, uh, let me put it like this, 
today we are going to see that Jesus saves us all the way to the end. Jesus saves us all the way to the end. <clears throat> Jesus doesn't save us from sin and then leave us there. He saves us all the way to the end. He continues to save us, keeps saving us until the very end. And that's what we are going to talk about today. Last week we saw where it began, Jesus saving where it began. Today we talk about where his saving activity kind of ends or how far it goes, right? Jesus saves us all the way to the end. When I say that, people automatically, usually when they think of Jesus saving, they only think of, you know, or if we say Jesus saved me, we only usually use it to describe what has already happened to us in salvation, we say, right? What do we mean by that? I am saved. What do we mean by that? I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and I am saved. What we mean by that is it has already happened to me. I am already saved. Jesus has already saved me. But if you go to the Bible, in the New Testament, you will find that that is only one of the ways it speaks about salvation. Yes, you are already saved, but the New Testament also teaches that you are being saved and you will be saved. Okay, I want to start there because now we are talking about the continuing activity of Jesus as Savior, right? Jesus continues to save us. That's the whole point of today's message. He doesn't just save us from sin. He continues to save us all the way to the end. But some people may be wondering, but salvation is just what happened to me when I received Jesus. Isn't that it? Well, the New Testament says, no, that's just the beginning. You are saved, you are already saved, but you are being saved and you will be saved. Let me show you how the New Testament teaches this. Just a sample verse for each. You know, I, I don't have to turn to Ephesians 2.8 which says, By grace you have been saved. You know that verse very well, right? That's the way we are used to thinking about salvation. We have been saved. By grace you have been saved through faith, right? And so we are already saved, we have been saved by grace but that's not the only way the New Testament speaks. Look at 1 Corinthians 1.18. <clears throat> I'm just going to go. Uh, if you have time, you can refer to these verses. or Otherwise, you can note them down. See them later on YouTube, whatever. Right? It's just a sample verse. It's trying to show you that sal we use the word salvation to speak about what happened to us one time in the past. But the New Testament, uh, when you come and study salvation, it's a much broader concept. It, just, it did not happen just one time in the past to you. It is happening. 1 Corinthians 1.18. To those who are being saved. Look at this verse. The word of the cross is 1 Corinthians 1 18. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. To those who are being saved. I am reading from the ESV translation. And the tense here is present continuous. We are being saved. It doesn't say to those who are saved. It says to those who are being saved. The message of the cross is the power of God. Now let me show you future tense that we will be saved. Hebrews 9.28 Just to show you that salvation is an ongoing thing. Hebrews 9.28 So Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for, uh, who eagerly waiting for him. Look how it says, talks about Jesus. Christ was offered once to bear sins of many. He will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting. Notice, we think we are already saved and that's it. But here the verse says, Christ will appear a second time to do what? To save. To save. So in some way, his second coming will save, right? So the concept of salvation is it happened to us already when we believed in Jesus. Our sins were forgiven. Uh, to a great extent, we are saved already. But then we are being saved in some way and we will be saved in another way. Another thing I want to point out right at the beginning is Jesus' role as Savior also continues. Continues. It doesn't stop. I want to point this out from the Bible itself. Jesus' role as Savior continues. Right? Um, the same verse. Who is doing the saving? Hebrews 9.28. You are already opened there. 
you know, Jesus is doing the saving, right? Pretty obvious things I'm pointing out right at the beginning, right? We need to set the base here for what we're going to say. Salvation is an ongoing thing and Jesus continues to save. He is the one who will appear a second time and he is the one who will save, right? So he has already saved us, but he continues to save us and he will save us when he appears the second time as well. Another important verse, Hebrews 7.25, just nearby to where you are. Hebrews 7.25. Jesus continues to save. Look at this. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession. He is able to save to the uttermost. This is a very important verse. This is where I got the title for today. Jesus saves all the way to the end. That's the message today. Jesus saves all the way to the end. It comes right out of this verse. Look at those words in this verse. Jesus is able to save to the uttermost. To the uttermost. That word translated uttermost very uh, meaningful word in the Greek. That word can have two different uh, two meanings. One meaning is save uh, completely or fully or wholly or perfectly. Meaning Jesus is able to save completely, perfectly, wholly, fully. What is the meaning there? Leaving nothing out, Jesus will fully save. He is able to fully or completely. Save or wholly, perfectly, leaving out no aspect. Right? That's the meaning if you take it like that. But there is another way to take it. And that is this. All the way to the end. Saves to the uttermost means saves all the way to the end. Or some translations put it like this. Saves finally. Saves forever. Saves now and always. That's a nice translation. Jesus is able to save now. And always and forever, something like that. The point is, all the way to the end, right? And out of the two meanings, both meanings are relevant here. But the second meaning, that is, he saves all the way to the end, is more relevant in this context, in this particular place. In Hebrews 7.25, that is the more relevant meaning. Let me show you why. Just read from a couple of verses before. You want to understand some verse in the Bible? Just read from a few verses before. <coughs> Read from verse 23, you will understand very easily. Is it Jesus saves completely? Is that the main emphasis here? Or is Jesus saves all the way to the end? Is that the main emphasis? Verse 23. 23. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. It's comparing Jesus to the high priest of the Old Testament. This passage is comparing Jesus to the high priest of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there were several high priests, right? Aaron and his sons, but the problem with them was they were prevented from continuing. Why? They could not continue forever and ever because they died. Aaron became the high priest, but one day came and he died. He could not continue as high priest. The next, his son had to be high priest. Then he also died. Then next high priest. Like this, they say before Jesus came around, possibly there were a few hundred high priests by the time Jesus comes around, from the time of Aaron. So many high priests keep changing, you know. High priest is a very important man in Israel. He dealt with all the spiritual matters. But he's going on changing. No one high priest is able to finish what he started. <laughs> but you come to Jesus, verse 24. But he, referring to Jesus, but Jesus, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. What is the difference between Jesus and all the other high priests? Because he continues forever. Jesus doesn't die. He doesn't go away like that. He died once but then he rose again and he lives forever. He continues forever. Because of that he has an unchangeable priesthood. He remains permanently our high priest. Verse 25. After saying all this. After saying Aaron and his sons. Those high priests die. They had to keep on. They, they, God had to change them. right? Because of death. But Jesus continues forever as our permanent high priest. After saying all that in verse 25, he says, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. I think when you read it in context, you can see this high priest remains all the way. And so he is able to save 
all the way to the end. That is why I put it like that. That is the main emphasis here. Why is he able to save? Because he always lives. Look at that. Verse 25. Why is he able to save to the end? Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Since he always lives. Since he always lives. Jesus lives today. We sang that song. Christ is risen from the dead. Yeah. Again, again, we see Christ is risen, risen because the awareness, the consciousness of the risen Lord Jesus is missing for many people. Christ is risen today, and the reason He is able to save you all the way to the end is because He is alive today, and He will be alive forever and ever. Right? right. Jesus saves all the way to the end. Now, Let's take this further. We can talk about a lot of things. What do we mean by Jesus saves all the way to the end means everything from saving from sin to all the way to the last saving. Okay? Jesus saves all the way to the end means everything from saving from sin which we saw last week to <coughs> the last saving that he will do all the way to the <coughs> end. There are several things we can talk about there. How Jesus saves us from our earthly problems sometimes. Huh? I spoke about sin being the main problem last week. But then sin bears forth the small, small problems, right? Not so small in our eyes, like sickness, like uh, poverty, like uh, family problems. All these are uh, the children of sin only, <laughs> are the fruit of sin, consequences of sin, punishments that uh, man experienced because of sin, you know. And... Uh, Jesus, the Bible teaches, he doesn't save only from sin, but he also saves from what comes as a result of sin. And he, so he's able to save us from sickness. So many people in his earthly life himself, Jesus said, looked at them and said, your faith has saved you. Speaking to a man who just got healed. He healed somebody of leprosy, somebody of, you know, uh, various kinds of diseases. And he said, your faith has healed you or saved you is the word he used so he's able to save people from sickness even today. He's able to save people from poverty. That's what we believe in this, <coughs> this church. Yeah. Some people don't believe that, right? They say they limit Jesus' saving activity. But, uh, but uh, you know, well, we don't have time to go into that. Um, but Jesus saves from everything. That is true. That is taught in the Bible. And Jesus saves from every curse, every problem. If you look to Jesus as your saviour today, it's the key is to look to him as your saviour. Sometimes the key to some great success, some great breakthrough in the Christian life is simply look. That's how the people got healed in the Old Testament. They were bitten by snakes. Uh, Moses lifted up a brazen serpent and he said, look, and those who look got healed. <laughs> look to Jesus as your saviour, as one who can save you from your problem today. Right? He can and he will. He saves all the way to the end. means all that. But I am not going to focus on all that today. I want to go all the way to the end itself. Okay? Jesus saves all the way. But I want to focus on the end. I will tell you why. One is there is no time. Another is <laughs> in our church we teach on the other aspects. Right? Uh, how Jesus saves from sickness, from poverty, from every curse and so on. So at other times, if you are attending regularly, you should be able to uh, hear those truths and benefit. Uh, not only that, but there is another important reason, I believe. Since we saw beginning last week, I want to show you the end. Beginning of Jesus' saving activity today, end of Jesus' saving activity. But another important reason is, if you can see the end... And if you can be certain about the end, you can cert be certain about the whole way. Let me say that again. If you can be certain about the end, you can be certain about the whole way to the end. point we are saying today is Jesus saves all the way to the end, but we are going to focus on the end. What Jesus saves us from the end, how he does it and so on. And how we can be certain about that. And I am doing this because if you can be certain about the end, you can be certain about the whole way. Well, I found a friend, oh, such a 